and welcome to Wapakoneta, where tonight WSN will bring you a non-conference matchup. Climb the Central Camp of Thunderbirds, who are down to play the Wapakoneta Redskins. My name is Mark Giants. My players do play by play. Alongside Josiah Stober, do our color commentary. Josiah, last week of January, everybody's building now for that February plus tournament run. Yeah, and both these teams would love to get a win on this non-conference schedule for both these teams. You know, really kind of at the same place. You know, really, you know, need to get string together some of these wins coming on. Walpock, a win last week, you know, this past Saturday. Uh, LCC coming off a, a tough loss to Lima Senior. So both teams looking to get a quality win tonight. Lima Central Catholic comes in tonight. They are 5-7 and seven on the season. They did have a loss to Lima Senior in the uh, Lima Cup game last week. How about the keys to victory tonight for Coach Kill's team? Yeah, Coach Kill uh, talked about, you know, they got to get defensive stops that lead to transition or opportunities to score. Uh, you know, they want to own the boards, you know, use some of their athletic ability to get on the offensive glass and also dictate the tempo for tonight. The uh, Lima Central County Thunderbirds will start this way. Number 10 is Carson Parker, 6'4", junior at 16 points a game and 6.4 boards. Number 12 is Matthew Quatman, 5'10", junior, 7.5 points per game. The point guard is number 14, Willie Foster, junior, a 5'10", freshman, at 10.8 points per game and 2.3 assists. Number 20, Parker Judy, 6'1", junior, average 6.7 points per game. And number 34 is Billy Burke, a 6'5", senior, at 7.4 points per game and 7 rebounds. And they are 5-7 and seven on the season. Wapak comes in tonight. They are 7-8. and eight. They're 3-2 and two in the Western Buckeye League. How about keys to the game for the Redskins? Yeah, Coach Elkert, uh, you know, they got to win the turnover battle. You know, they like to take care of the ball, slow it down a little bit, take care of the ball, you know, not turn the ball over and allow LCC to get those easy points. You know, they also got to win the rebounding battle. Don't want to give up any second chances. And then also limit the points in the paint, especially for Foster and Parker, who love to get inside. Well, and they are going to be down a player tonight. Jackson Quarter, their 6'5", senior, averaging 10.9 points per game. Second league to score, out with a concussion. So let's go through their starting lineups this evening. Number two is Logan Crow, 6'2", senior, averaging just over a point in a game. Number three is Zach Niekamp, 6'0", junior, at 12.9. Number five is Nate Metzger, 6'1", junior. He averages 3.1 points per game, but three assists and five rebounds. Number 20 is Cash Shadle. Cash is a 6'1 junior, averaging 7.4 points per game. And number 30 is Deacon Redderer, a 6'7 senior, at three points and three and a half rebounds per game. Wapak comes in tonight. They are 7-8, 3-2 in the Western Buckeye League. And they are coming off a win last week. In fact, they've won four out of their last five. Our officials tonight, John Derryberry, Steve Orr, Tony Casanova. That's our pregame show here from Wapak. The starting tip coming up right after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta, where our scoreboard is provided by Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapaka, Delta. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken, and home style happens here. Introducing the starting lineups while we've got a moment. LCC, they are 5-7. and seven. They average 57.8 points per game. They give up 61.6. Wapakoneta Redskins, they are 7-8. and eight. They average 41.3. And they give up 47.3. If you missed our pregame, Jackson Quarterer will not play this evening. He had a concussion last weekend. They hope to have him back and cleared to play this weekend, but not tonight. And Logan Crow will start in his place. Wapakana wins the tip. And we'll find uh, Nate Metzger on top. Pass down inside. And Deacon Redderer goes up and has our first basket. Yeah, a great first possession there for by Wapak as they were able to get it to the high post find their big man down low, and he was able to go over left shoulder and finish. LCC basketball, they in their blue uniforms this evening. This is Foster in the rim, and his shot will not fall. The rebound comes to Nate Metzger. And we'll head the other way with Zach Niekamp with the basketball. And Walpock likes to take their time, move the ball, try to get everybody to touch it and see if they can get an easy bucket here. So we'll see if they take some time off the clock here and try to get another easy bucket. Off a screen, the pass goes down low inside. Tried to get it across court to quarter. That doesn't go. Burke with a steal. And Willie Foster Jr. heads the other way. Carson Parker. 
Burke trying to post up inside. And Foster looked at him and decided to reset the offense. Foster accepts the screen. This is Burke. Carson Parker now in the post. Pass down low inside. Burke works, works, and gets a shot up that will not fall. The rebound comes to Logan Crow. Oh, good defense there by Deacon Redderer. Has just kept his hands up, made Burke make a tough shot, and Walpole goes the other way. And Redderer is a beneficiary of a good pass, and he has all four points in the basketball game. Pass on top. This ends up with the basketball. It's Parker Judy. This is Foster. Quatman has it now. This is Matthew, the sophomore. And then Willie Foster Jr. resets with two minutes into this one. Uh, Walpock likes to stay down, play some defense, make it tough on LCC, but yeah. a great take there. Matthew Quatman with a good move to the goal. He's got his first basket of the evening, averages seven and a half points per game. Logan Crow at the start this evening. Metzger. This will be a three ball that will go up from Zach Niekamp that rattles around. Redder gets that rebound. And that time his shot is blocked and Billy Burke tracks it down. Here comes the Thunderbirds. And what do we get? We get a travel call as the defense was applied by Zach Niekamp. And LCC would like to get out quickly and get the ball into Foster's hands, use his speed and athletic ability. And that time, good defense by the Redskins staying in front. And then we got a travel. Talk about the schedule for these two teams as we get through this. And of course, Lima Central Catholic plays a brutal non-conference schedule. And we'll talk about how their last eight games of the year are going to match up. And it is, it's a, a tough walk for them through the rest of the season. Here's a jump shot by Niekamp. Nope. Rebound, however, comes into the hands of Parker Judy. Pass ahead to Burke. And right down the lane goes Carson Parker for a basket. And those are the type of buckets LCC wants. See if they can push it up. Burke did a really good job of running the floor and then finds his teammate Parker and drives to the lane and is able to finish. First four points of the game went to the Redskins. The next four have gone to the T-Birds. Pass inside. That shot's blocked, however, out of bounds by Foster. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be an easy layup for the Redskins, but... Foster was able to recover and get a block and let Walpole ball. Ryan Sadler, who wears number 23, a 6'4 junior, and number 10, Caleb Moyer, a 6'1 freshman winner in the basketball game. It's our first two subs. We're almost four minutes into this one. This is Moyer. Skip pass. Knee camp for three. Rebound by Judy on the backside. Here comes Carson Parker ahead to Foster. Couple of screens away for Willie Foster Jr., freshman who averages 10 a game. It's a screen from Burke. And then Parker has to go get it. Here's Judy for three. Ends up a bit hard. Zach Niekamp rebounds. Yeah, LCC is continuing to run their sets. If they don't have it, they reload. Try to get another set, trying to get in the hands of their best player, you know, Carson Parker, just Walpock doing a good job of kind of shutting him down early. Zach Niekamp trying to probe for an opening and cannot find one. Here's Redderer. Metzger off the flex cut. Metzger into the lane. His shot is contested inside. He hit it out of bounds. He went out of bounds off of LCC. That will bring in Number 44, Jacob Locke. And who else did I see checked in a moment ago? Looks like number 30 checked in. That would be Payne Cutlip. So each team has brought a couple of guys in off the bench in the first five minutes of this one. Foster with a beautiful move. Lost the basketball, though, and it went out of bounds off of him. Good spin move, just lost it out of bounds. Yeah, and a good call by our 
officiating crew. Lots of years of experience from this group of guys, so uh, they've yeah. seen about everything in their, in their uh, <laughs> officiating experience. Well, the official was trying to inbound the basketball, and as he was doing so, the horn buzzed. We had to start this one over again. The reason for it was that the Parker Judy checked back into the basketball game, and Willie Foster Jr. sat down. Tied at four. Scoop shot. Nope. Went a little bit hard. Redder battling for the rebound, but it comes instead to Lau. Here's a pass ahead. Here's Parker Judy to the rim, and what do we get? Offensive foul. Our first foul in the basketball game. We'll get a Parker Judy on a player control foul. A good recovery there by Ryan Sadler as he was able to get his feet even outside the paint, take that charge, and still like to see you know the that offensive foul taken. Well, it's called it hustle plays. As Shadle checked back into the basketball game. Been on the four spot for quite a while in this one. Here's Moyer. The screen action. Coming off that screen is Metzger, and his ball's taken away from him. Head the other way. Judy. Cutler. And they're going to reset Matthew Quatman on top. On the game early, I believe it's you know kind of in Walpock's favor. These uh, low-scoring games, defensive games, making it difficult for LCC. You know, get a whole lot of looks, and they've done a good job on the defensive end so far. That they have. Carson Parker tried to get to the goal and could not. Got 90 seconds left in the opening quarter. Plotman gives it up. Cutler looks inside. CC has not played in a week. They played last Tuesday night. Walpock played over the weekend a couple of games. Plotman working and can't get loose. There's the play call. The second time LCC's had to reload their offense. This Walpock defense doing a really good job. Spin move in the middle of the lane by Vic Block doesn't go. The rebound comes out to Logan Crow. Here's Caleb Boyer. Metzger goes baseline, kick out. This will be a three ball that'll go up and be a little short for Logan Crow. And here comes the Thunderbirds the other way. Plotman in the lane, a little runner for him, bounces around, rebound comes to Crow. And I would think Wapak will play last shot of the quarter by their MO this season. A little bit of a frustration shot there by Quatman, I think. It's not get, setting their offense as easily as they'd like and tried to drive and kind of took a tough shot over a couple of Walpock defenders and opportunity here for Walpock with 10 seconds to go. Trap Boyer, then they find Metzger on top. Nate works into the lane, wants to spin move, a left-handed push shot, and it will roll in. And Metzger has a basket, and that will bring our first quarter to the end, a low-scoring quarter, but Walpock. We'll take a 6-4 lead in the first quarter break. You're watching high school basketball on WLSN. Our scoreboard provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. We didn't have a timeout in our opening quarter, but tonight's timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Low scoring Josiah kind of plays into Wapak's hands. Yeah, it's the exact game plan that you know Coach Elker wants his guys to play solid defense, take care of the ball. Only had two turnovers there in that first quarter, you know, and really made it difficult for LCC to get into their sets. We saw LCC a couple times just having to reset their offense, run a different set. So uh, I'm sure those things Coach Kill's talking about is some ways that, you know, they can break down this ballpark defense. Carson Parker and Matthew Quatman each have a basket for the four points for Lima Central Catholic. Deacon Redder has four and Nate Mesker two. The six points for the Redskins. The only foul in the opening quarter was Parker Judy when he had the offensive foul called against him. It'll be Thunderbird ball. 
Rudy tries to look off a screen, looks inside, can't get it downside. This is Burke. Cutler tried to get to the rim, and now Foster. Payne Cutler up on the wing. And they reset. Uh, Walpock's doing a good job. Anytime Foster comes off of that screen, they're trying to double him, but oh, a great take there by yeah. Parker, Parker Judy. Judy. With a really pretty reverse layup, knocks it up at six. This is Redderer, he of the four points in the opening quarter. Nesker comes off a screen. Jack Niekamp. Gets to the rim. Shots blocked by Burke. Redderer rebounds. Walpock <laughs> kept control. Shadle throws it inside. This is Cash Shadle for three. And hustling rebound from Nate Metzger. Shadle gets another look at three. That one misses. Parker Parker tracked the ball down the corner. Coach Elker will be happy with that possession as you know, got it inside, got it outside, just wasn't able to knock down the two opportunities. Trying to throw it inside to Burke and can't get it there. Now they do. Burke works the lane. And a little turnaround left-handed hook. Nope. Rebound to Cachado. And they're going to get a foul that will go against. Let me make sure uh, it does. It goes against Willie Foster, Jr. His first team, second. And we just saw a little bit of frustration there by Billy yes. Burke right in front of us. You know, just not nothing's coming easy for this Thunderbirds team here in this first half. So, you know, just I mean, we saw a little bit of that frustration. You know, we'll see if they can calm down and, you know, run some offense on their next possession. Yeah, a little frustrated with himself to get in the lane, had a little roll shot. That's a three ball. It will go for Cash Shadow. He's got 31 of those on the season. Now he shoots 45% from the arc. His team's up three. Judy looking inside, can't find anything there. Now Cutlip and Foster Jr. He directs traffic. Cutlip in the corner, got it inside of Judy, and he will be fouled by Logan Crow on the flash cut. Lima Central Catholic has eight basketball games remaining. Those eight teams have 88 wins and 31 losses. Four of them, Jackson Center, Crestview, Liberty Benton, and Defiance have a single loss on the season. So their remaining eight games are against a talented group of people. Here's a lob inside, Parker. Hands off to Quatman. Quatman for three, short. Parker hustles into the rebound. Foster pull up jumper short. And the rebound goes to Nate Metzger. Well, and that's something that kind of the MO go back to the scheduling. You know, LCC has always, you know, never really shied away from playing really good competition. You know, Coach Kill wants to get them prepared for the postseason. So, you know, he's not afraid to schedule some of these big teams, see if they can get better. Plotman with a nice defensive stop. And of course, there's a three that'll go up. That one will go. Three balls, Zach. Zach Kukam. He's got 30 of those on the season, and we have a timeout. 4.35 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WLSN. We have a timeout, and tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Coach didn't have Lappy with his defensive performance that last time, giving up two threes in a row. Yeah, you saw Coach Gill getting a little bit 
heated over his team. You know, the effort getting through some of those screens. You know, got to calm his guys down. I think there's a little bit of frustration on the offensive side. You know, now they're getting a little bit frustrated on the defensive side. So, you know, this is playing right into the tempo of Walpock. You know, they want to play tough defense, slow you down, make you earn everything. And so far, you know, with four minutes left in this second quarter, they've done a great job. Uh, I've been looking at the Lima Central captain. They're preparing for this. In the games they have won, they've scored 66 points a game. They've given up 55. In the games they've lost, they've scored only 52 points a game and given up 66. So just huge swings between wins and losses for them as far as points scored and points given up. Here's Cutler. Quatman. Parker. A little weave action out front. Find a car. If Quatman gets loose, he's going to draw a foul. To the free throw line, we will go. Make sure we get the right call. It does go on Caleb Boyer. His first, team second. He's caught to the free throw line where he is a 63% free throw shooter. Dead center for point three for him. That one spun out and went to a rebound. Metzger, knee camp, little trap action, Boyer. And LCC changing up their defense a little bit here. See if they can force a couple turnovers that can lead to some offense. Hey, but Boyer for three. Nope. And who gets the rebound? Hustle play. It's going to be still loose on the floor. Here goes Cutlip to the rim and finishes. Payne Cutlip out hustles everybody the ball and he gets a basket. Here's a trap, a trap again. Shado for three. He's got a pair of those in the corner for six points. That six points is a difference in the basketball game right now. It's 15-9 Redskins. Well, you see Coach Kill trying to switch up that defense to try to force a little bit more action uh, from this Walpock attack. And, you know, a great way to get a team out of that pressure is to, to knock down some shots. And uh, Cash Shadle was able to do that on that last possession. Hopkins steps through the lane and travels. All of the Wapakana Redskin points in quarter number two have come from the three-point line. Two from Cash Shadle, one from Zach Niekamp. And they will have possession of the basketball up by six. Warrior looks, and it's stripped loose, but Redderer gets it. Niekamp. Tried to get inside and could not. Nice bounce pass. Shot's a little bit hard, but the rebound comes to Metzger. His knee camp for three. They got another one. Ball ball. Yeah, it is heating up from the outside, finding a little space, but all that came from that effort uh, from Nate Metzger to get that offensive rebound, find his teammate on the three-point line, knocked it down. Cutlip trying to get inside and cannot. This is Quatman for three. Good check out, but a good hustle play by Burke. But Moyer secures the ball. We're going the other way. To the rim. And an one opportunity. It will go for Zach Niekamp. They give the foul to the guy. Like it went to... Carson Parker gets the foul. He makes this. He'll be scoring threes, but from a different way than he does. Might figure that. He's an 82% free throw shooter on the season. The lead has grown to 12. Uh, the big story of this first half is Walpock dictating the tempo. One of the keys that Coach Kill talked about it's got to be able to dictate the tempo, and a good play yeah. by Carson Parker. Get his own rebound, put it back up, and draw a contact. The, the rebound goes to the guy who was fastest off the floor, and that time was Carson Parker. 
And he went right up and got it and scored. Looking to see the foul was assessed too. Looks like it goes to Deacon Retterer, his first. It goes Willie Foster Jr. back in the game. Carson Parker shoots 77% from the free throw line. We'll line this one up. Try to get this under a double figure lead. Foster hustles into that rebound. Scramble on the floor. And it goes out of bounds off a of cash shade off. I miss Sal Guigenti checking in for Lima Central Catholic. He wears number 40. He was a part of that hustle play right there. Butler came up with that loose ball. Coaching a minute to go in the opening half. Parker inside, ball fake, and will draw a foul and go to the free throw line. Well, really, the first, the, la the first time tonight, these last two possessions, that Carson Parker has found a little bit of space inside. Now we're discussing, yeah, I was going to say, Coach Kill said it's a shooting foul, and our official, Mr. Derry Berry, agreed he's the one who called the foul, which was assessed to pay Cutlip, and back to the free throw line will go Carson Parker. Point five for him this evening as he splashes that. Actually, I was looking at the foul from the previous time. It went to Zach Niekamp, not paying Pellet. He, was, he wasn't going to foul his own teammate. <laughs> Also see it here now in the full court man-to-man -man pressure. Looked up and saw that 30 on the scoreboard and just automatically marked it down without thinking about it. It was supposed to have been three. That ball went out of bounds. It was hit out of bounds by Cutler. Good hustle play as he was defending Zach Niekamp. Inbound and back to Metzger as they walk it up this time. Gugenti will pick him up. Tebert's got it back to eight. It was 12. Here's a three that'll go up. And another one. Zach Niekamp's having a quarter. 12 points for him. All in this quarter. And third three of the night and from Niekamp. Yeah, and a three-point play from a foul and a basket. Parker, 17-footer. Nope. And Redder will chase it down in the corner. And Walpock will settle for a last shot here. That's screw. Bump and run. Boyer gets inside, kick out. This will be Shadow for three. That one missed, but the rebound comes to Moyer. He puts it up and scores. Kayla Moyer's first basket to an offensive rebound that he powered up and drew contact. Well, one of the keys to the game for Walpock from Coach Elkert. They got to win the rebounding battle. And tonight, in this first half, they've been crashing that offensive glass, giving their team second opportunities, and it's been paying off here in this first half. Here's free throw doesn't go. The lead stays at 13. Tebers want to get a shot before the buzzer. Foster loses the basketball. Warriors going to get a throw from midcourt. That is short. Really good second quarter if you're wearing the home whites, and they will take a 26-13 lead to the break if you're watching high school basketball at WOSN. It's halftime at Wapak Canetta. The Redskins with a 26-13 lead over the LCC Thunderbirds. Quarter scores for the LCC team, 4-13. They are three or four at the free throw line. Quarter scores for Wapak, six and 20 for their 26. What are the kind of numbers you have, Josiah? Yeah, looking for the visiting LCC Thunderbirds. 
Six points from Carson Parker, uh, three points from Matthew Quatman, and two points apiece from Parker Judy and Payne Coltip uh, for the home team. Really got hot, like you said, 20 points in that second quarter, led by Zach Niekamp. Comes in averaging 12.9 points, had 12 points in that uh, second quarter alone. Uh, his teammate, Cash Shadel, six points, two threes um, in that uh, second quarter. And Nate Metzger with two, Caleb Moyer with two, and Deacon Redder with four. But the game was pretty much played at the pace that Wapak could have won, and then they got loose for some threes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not many times you see Walpock, you know, shooting shots early, but they, when they got hot, especially Kneecamp and Shadle were looking for their shots and were knocking them down. You saw in a couple possessions, come off that one screen, knock down that three, you know, really extended this lead. You know, I'm sure Coach Kill wasn't too happy in that locker room. We'll see what he, adjustments he makes for this second half. I, I would think, you know, he tried a little half-court trap. He tried to speed things up a little bit. That got Wapak loose for a couple threes. But I'm looking for Coach Kill to really turn up the pressure both defensively and hopefully and offensively as well here in this third quarter. Yeah, I, th I definitely think he's going to challenge his men, you know, to get into this Wapak team, see if they can speed him up even more. You know, Walpock did a great job of forcing them to come out of that pressure um, by knocking down some shots. But I think Coach Kill is going to tell his guys, is, hey, I want to see a little bit more effort, a little bit more grit, especially on the defensive end, you know, see if they can chip into this lead and get it down into that single digit. Second half action coming up in just a moment. It'll be Walpock and a Redskin basketball first. They with a 13-point lead here as we head to the third eight-minute stands up. Back in a moment, you're watching high school basketball, WOSN. Our scoreboard is provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lyme, Milwaukee, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Mark Shine and Josiah Stober. Wapakana you know, Redskins with a 13-point lead. And they will get the basketball first here in half number two. Just a noticeable change here for LCC. No Willie Foster to start this second quarter sitting on the bench. Coach. Hey. Payne Cutlip will start for him as we get a force to travel right away. Well, Coach Kill got a turnover that he wanted. Quatman moves to the point guard position. And here comes Matthew with the basketball. LCC averaging almost 58 points per game, held to just 13 in the opening half. Quatman looking for somebody. Finally finds Parker. Here's the pass inside to Burke. Spin move, up and under, and it rolls out on him. Good opportunity, it wouldn't fall. Yeah, really a good possession there by the T-Birds. and Found the man they want inside, Billy Burke, and made a good move, just wasn't able to finish. And then Redder gets the ball down the low post and will be fouled. And I think it's an out-of-bounds foul, I believe. Let's see. Foul number 10, Carson, Carson Parker becomes the first player in the game with two fouls. It is a baseline out of bounds situation. It's Logan Crow. And Metzger comes off the screen, heads right to the rim. And Redderer, a rebound basket, just like he did in the opening part of the basketball game. Yeah, Redderer with the first four points of the game. First two points of this second half for this Redskins team. Looking inside to Parker and then tried to get to Burke and Parker Judy had to track it down. Here's Quatman. Parker looks inside, can't get it there. Comes Parker off the screen and goes against the ball and then muscles up and scores. Eight points for Carson Parker. Well, and I think that's what LCC needs to do a little bit more of, see if they can get Parker down on that low block, use his size and his strength to get some easy buckets for this T-Birds team. Well, certainly they've gone inside on their first two possessions of the half. Here's a move to the goal. Unable to finish inside, however, was knee camp, and we'll go the other way. Here's a pass ahead to the pack, and a finish. The basket will go to Parker Judy. He's got an and one opportunity. Well, that was one of the keys for Coach Kill tonight was those defensive stops leading to some easy transition, some opportunities, and a great pass there by Carson Parker to his teammate. Was able to go up, 
Get a little contact and opportunity for an old-fashioned three-point play. Logan Crow was assessed his second foul. Judy is a 75% free throw shooter. He's got five points in the game now. Caleb Moyer, Moyer checked in after that foul occurred. This is him with the basketball. And he traveled. Under pressure, he traveled. Uh, we see some of those changes early by Coach Kill. You know, on the offensive end, trying to get it down into the post. But on the defensive end, try to force this Walpock team to play a little bit quicker than they're used to. Forces some turnovers to get back on the offensive side of the ball. Burke down inside, Carson Parker. That shot's blocked. He gets his own rebound and is fouled. The foul goes to Nate Metzger. Nate's first. Thunderbird based on out of bounds. Judy Parker spins in the lane and rolls one in. He's got seven in the game now. Five in this quarter. Cuts the lead to eight. Here come the T-Birds. Shado for three. Battle for the rebound inside. Metzger throws it, and then Parker ends up with it. Carcer headed the other way. Plotman's going to get a three look that is short, and the rebound comes to Nate Metzger. Zach Niekamp. And Wapak says, hold. Let's just get this thing set up and run our sets. Here's a trap. Metzger looks. Boyer throws it inside. Redderer. And offensive foul. Deacon Redderer lowers his shoulder into Billy Burke and will go the other way. Redderer's second foul. Third turnover here early in the third quarter for this Walpock Redskins team. Only had two in that first half, so already this LCC defense playing a little bit tougher, a little bit more physical. And forcing this Walpock team to get a little bit out of their comfort zone. The lead was 15 not long ago. It is eight now, and Thunderbirds trying to cut into it even more. Cutlip off a of screen. Plotman looks inside to Burke. Burke goes up strong, gets it blocked by Redderer, though. Moyer scrambled for the rebound, along with a couple of T-Birds, including Payne Cutlip. Here comes Jacob Lock back into basketball game for Burke. Arrow says T-Bird ball. Here comes Ryan Sadler into the game. And he takes Redderer's place three and a half minutes into the second half. Pass out front. This is Payne Cutler. And he tracks it down. They're allowed to go into the backcourt to get the ball in the baseline out of bounds play. So that's not why there was not an over and back call there, unless he had controlled it in the front court and lost it. Carson Parker inside. He backs the guy down. Spin move. Nope. Rebound cut up, up again. That gets blocked. It's ripped loose to Quatman. Plays for very physical, Josiah. Yeah, and the officials are letting him play tonight a little bit. They are. Plotman to the rim. Nope, it's blocked, but he draws a foul. See, the call goes against. It will go against Zach Niekamp. His second and the team's fourth and a half. Matthew Plotman will go to the line where he is one for two tonight and has three points. That was short. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues on Friday night. You can join Patrick Candler for an hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around. Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW, followed by the game of the week. He made the second with two. Four points for him. Will court man pressure this time. Let's see if they trap out of it. They do not. Nick Metzger. Zach Niekamp had the hot second quarter. Plotman pokes it loose. And then he lost it. Parker heads the other way. 
Cutlip runs it down, and his left-handed shot will go. I've seen that a couple times here in this third quarter is on a turnover. LCC is getting out quickly, finding those runners, some good passes and some finishing, and it looks like we got a timeout here by Walpock. We do. Timeout Walpock, 3.16 to go in the third. The lead's down to five. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's nice timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. The first time out of the basketball game for Trey Elker. His lead has been cut in 10, down to just five. And this third quarter really has been about LCC controlling this tempo, forcing a few more turnovers against this Redskins team, but then getting some easy buckets in transition. So, you know, Coach Kill, I'm sure, like we said, got on his guy saying, hey, we got to get a little bit more physical, all right? Don't allow them to control the Temple, and so far it's been all LCC here in this third quarter. Let's see if Wapak can rebound after that uh, timeout that their coach just called. Caleb Moyer looks inside. Got Nick Metzger on the block. Metzger bounced past Moyer, reverse layup, nope, rebound, and back up in. That basket was by Ryan Sadler. His first basket of the game. Got what they wanted coming out of a timeout. The lead's back to seven. Carson Parker in the lane. Spin move, left-handed hook, nope. And the rebound comes to Nate Metzger. Let's see if they score here. Sandler trying to post up inside, just locked. Here's Metzger. Zach Niekamp. Flex cut action this time by the Redskins. With Sadler off the screen, the high post. There's Moyer back cut. Power up. Taylor Moyer has another basket. He's got four in the game now. Good timeout to get the last four points. Yeah, good possession there by Walpaw. Took about 45 seconds off of that clock. Worked it around. Found the cutter, Caleb Moyer, inside. And he was able to get a good post move, go straight up and finish two and extend this lead. Parker Carson backs up a little bit, and now we're going to get a pushing foul out of bounds. 141 to go here in the third. Media timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. High School, it's 141 to go here in the third. It's a nine point lead for the home standing Redskins. They've scored the last four points in the basketball game. Mark Shine, Josiah Stober, Parker, Carson Parker rolls one in. He's got 10 in the game now with a four point quarter going. You know, Carson Parker really has a soft touch, fading away a little bit there on the out of bounds play and knocked down the eight foot jumper. As Shada looks inside, here's Metzger. Nate's double team to the low post kick out. Here's a three by Shadle. Got it. And Shadle has nine points line. All of them from 19 foot, nine inch line. And the lead goes back to 10. Yeah, hit two big threes in that second quarter to help Walpuck extend that lead. And comes out now here in the third quarter with another good three. And Good basket there by Jacob Locke. He spins into the lane for his first basket to cut the lead to eight. Warrior will advance the basketball. Sadler, Ryan throws it inside. Left-handed finish inside, Nate Metzger. He's got four in the game. Yeah, Nate Metzger's really played a great game. Not yeah. so much on the scoreboard, you know, has four points, but has six rebounds for this Walpock team yeah. and draws the defense of Carson Parker. So, I'll miss that shot. Knee camp's coming down with 20 seconds to go. Sadler made a really nice pass the last time, too. Here's Metzger. Typical game, Nate Metzger. He averages three points a game, five rebounds and three assists, and that's kind of what he's done this evening. He's been a solid defender. Decamp goes to the rim, and with 2.6 to go, we'll draw a foul. 
Good decision there by Niekamp. Knew the time, had to score, so jab to his left and tacked the right and drew contact and a foul from Willie Foster. Willie's second. Zach Niekamp has made his only free throw tonight. He has 12 points all back in quarter number two. He's an 82% free throw shooter. And thanks out to both sets of coaches for getting stats to us this week so we could provide some numbers for you. 13 in the game for him. Both Redderer and Burke check back in the game. So two bigs come in for the last 2.6. Also coming in will be Logan Crow. And Logan will take Nate Metzger's place. He made them both. 12 in the game for him. Foster. Going to get a throw from three-quarter court. That, oh, hit the back of the rim and had a chance, but didn't go. The Redskins survive a rally from the T-Birds, 29-29-27 to break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our book tonight here at Wapak is provided by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphi. It's called Lee's. For all of your catering needs, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. And that scoreboard says that Wapak and Red Redskins put up 13 points in quarter number three. LCC put up 14. The lead will be 12 as we go to the fourth quarter. Mark Shine and Josiah Stober here. Zach Niekamp has 12. Cash Shadel has 9 to lead Wapak Canetta. Carson Parker has 10. 7 today from Parker Judy. There's Cash Shadel. Redder inside now trying to get the ball. And Burke tips it away from him. But it's controlled by Zach Niekamp. Yeah, a little better quarter there for the T-Birds. You know, forced some turnovers early, but Wapak was able to respond. Redder's pass goes inside, and Matt, Nate Metzger will get to go to the free throw line. This is a hustle play by Deacon Redder tonight. And a nice pass as well. Who the foul went to? Looks like it goes to Jacob Lauf gets his first foul. And to the free throw line will go Nate Metzger. Six points in the game for him this evening. Excuse me, four points in the game. He's got to make two free throws to get to six. Oh, bounces that one out. JV game tonight was won by Wapakoneta, 32-30. Close all the way. They scored late and held on. And that one goes. He has five, does Nate Metzger. The lead's at 13. That's where we were at halftime. Lauk inside, up and under move, and oh, it won't go for him. Had a couple like that. Decamp hustles into the rebound and pulls it away from Lauk. This is Decamp, spin move, and they're going to reset. Now Walpock in no hurry here. Want to run their sets. Coach Elker calling out some plays for him to run, and man, the get it to is Redner. Doesn't it seem like Redder gets the first basket of every quarter? <laughs> I, I know he did in the second quarter, but in the first, third, and fourth quarter, he gets the first basket. The lead goes back to 15. Quatman. Uh, Redder has been really good for them tonight, especially with the absence of Jackson Quarter. You know, you know, second leading scorer for this Walpaw team out for the night. So, you know, had a couple guys that have had to step up and done a really good job. And trying to make a baseline move with Plotman. The ball went off his leg. That will bring Carson Parker back into the game. Earlier we told you that Lima Central Catholic is off until next Tuesday when they play Jackson Center. And then Friday the 3rd they have Crestview. Wapakana Redskins have Western Buckeye League action coming up the next two Friday nights. They have Elida in this facility on this particular Friday. And the first Friday in February they will go to the Bath Wildcats. They've won four out of the last five, have the Wapakana Redskins trying to make it five out of six. There's Moyer for three. K 
Caleb Royer had made just two of those on the season. He's got three now. He's got seven points tonight. And the lead goes to 18. Foster for three. Rebound, Metzger. Ahead to Moyer. Steal. Plotman goes after it. And Matthew Plotman scores. He's got six. His coach takes a timeout. 5.46 to go in the basketball game. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. LCC takes a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Metzger Financial Services helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back here at Wapak Kaneda. 16 point lead for the home team. It's a big three by Moyer a moment ago. Guy hasn't made many of those on the season. That was big. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, a couple guys have really stepped up in this game and you know, probably not expected to be as big on the offensive side, especially with Porter out. Um, but, you know, a lot of these guys, that's what happened. Next man up has to step up, and so far, Walpock's done that tonight. Thunderbirds pressuring out front. And we're going to get, what, a timeout that will go to the Walpock Canada Redskins. We're going to take another break watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back here at Wapakoneta, TV44 and WSN, a nonprofit organization supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation of any size. The way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. East team has called a pair of timeouts in the basketball game. That's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. 5.31 to go. Wapak up 16. Cashadel. The Boyer made a three from right there a moment ago. Heads baseline. Fine shade out front. The baseline pass. Redderer's inside. Works, works, and will be fouled by Billy Burke. At the previous timeout, LCC brought in Christian Marks, who wears number 23 as a 6'1 senior. Who's on the game playing some solid defense. Here's Redderer with a chance to get to double figures tonight. He averages just three a game. He's got eight now. And let's make it nine. Good game tonight for Deacon Redderer. Now, Walpock's been able to find him a couple times tonight, not only on some good passes to him, but also some really good post moves and you know some big free throws here in the fourth quarter to extend this lead. Absolutely, gets in the double figures. He has 10. Zach Niekamp leads his team with 12, with, four, with 14, excuse me. There's a power move inside, and Burke comes right back to the other end. He scores. And the first two points of the night yeah. for Billy Burke. He's missed some close ones. Shown a little bit of frustration, but was able to get a get good position there and finish at the bucket. Did not see who they assessed the foul to. I believe it was Redderer. Yeah, I thought it was. They didn't put it up on the board, and I was kind of waiting for that. If it was, it would be it is up on the board. Now it's his third. And Burke to the free throw line. Makes the free throw. It was an 80% free throw shooter on the season. Those are his first three points of the night. Here comes Quigenti into the basketball game. He can't double up on the baseline. His coach takes a timeout. Good call there by Coach Elker as he saw his player in the corner. 4.55 to go. His team leads by 15. You know, Josiah, that's, it's a call. I, I know it's in the rule book. The coach made a wise play. It's not one I like. You know, he's uh, 94 feet away. He's trapped on the baseline. If I had any rule I could make right now, the count was at four. So I would give them six seconds to get the ball over midcourt and reward that defense for what they did rather than say, okay, now you get a new 10. And I, I just think it would reward defense for what they do, and that's not the rule book. Coach made the right call, but that's how I'd handle it. Of course, I'm not king of the world. <laughs> 
Well, I think, too, it's an opportunity, a coaching opportunity to tell you, it hey, is. don't get stuck in the corner, uh, especially when you know LCC is going to trap you. So let's be a little bit smarter on our movement all right, and move the ball a little bit quicker. This will be Cash Shadle to inbound. And he throws it high to Redderer. He looks for a teammate and finds Metzger. And Redderer again. Boyer in the corner. Pass inside Redderer. And he's doubled up and rips the ball loose to the T-Birds. Cutting him, trying to save it, and he did. Here's Marks for three. Rebound, Zach Niekamp. Redskins lose it, though. Quatman's headed the other way. Quatman reverse layup and finishes. Matthew Quatman with eight. And his coach will take a timeout. That will be their third timeout. There's 4.17 to go in this one. And Thunderbirds trail 47 to 34. Out of town, we can't get WSN. WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. And the station people will no longer laugh at me for calling it Roku, because I got it right today. <laughs> A Roku. Well, they, for some reason, that was quite humorous when I yeah. called it Roku last <laughs> week. So, all right. Each team has uh, used three timeouts, and it will be Redskin basketball with 4.17 to go. And running the baseline with it is Shade looking and finally gets it inbounds to Metzger. Picks it up with Plotman pressuring him. Here's Kneecamp. T-Birds only have four team fouls. They can be super aggressive. Here's a three ball that's short, but Metzger rebounds and throws it. The only thing he could do, just threw it. Yeah, not a bad spot to throw it. You don't want to throw it to the bucket, your opponent's team's bucket, but couldn't well, find anybody and just threw it out of bounds. We talked about coaching. Coach Elker was about 20 feet on the floor. <laughs> Explain to Mr. DeCamp that we did not need your three at that particular point in the game. Yes. Yeah, not a not a very well, smart but shot. He did it wisely. He's walked out, calmly said it. You know, I, I just coaching is what it's all mm. about. Yeah, knowing Christian that Marks. they're up 13 points, you know, Walpole can be a little bit more picky with their shot selection. And Quatman gets in the lane, shoots one off the glass, and a bounce around and roll in. Matthew Quatman with 10. The lead's down to 11. See if the birds can make one more run at him. Cash Shadle. Held ball goes to the LCC. Matthew Quatman, six in the quarter. That is some solid defense by his teammates over the last couple minutes have cut this to 11. Here's Foster. Yeah, and Walpock, three turnovers in the last four possessions. So. Tebers getting after him a little bit. We'll see if Walpaw can withstand this storm. Carson Parker accepts the screen. Plotman. Foster gets a three look. Short. Redder skies in to get a big rebound. That's a nice play on his part. Well, that's exactly what you want your big man to do is get those rebounds. Skied in. Thought like LCC had position on, on the floor, but he was able to get it. And now Walpaw has a opportunity to take some time off of this clock. This is Redder right here. And I can tell you what, Josiah, somebody has schooled him well because this 6'7 guy who doesn't immediately catch the ball and bring it down. Mm -hmm. He always has the ball shoulder height or higher. Make it, uh, you know, some little guys can't get it taken away from him. He's been schooled very well. Kaufman pick up that foul. That is his first and the team's fifth. 2.44 to go and Shadle to inbound. Coach Kill wasn't too happy on that last call. Thought his player got a free steal there, but officials saw it a little bit different. And Walpock ball. Here's Shadle the inbounds. Got 
Zach Niekamp in trouble. Pagenti and he go after the loose ball. And it'll be Wapak ball out of bounds on the held ball call. Zach Niekamp got another little look there from Coach Elker. <laughs> you know, one of those possessions where just pick up the ball, be strong with it, keep possession. Niekamp wanted to dribble that through two defenders and got a hold up. Pressured out front right now by Cutlip. And we're going to get a Guigenti foul against Sadler. That will be team foul six. Sal Guigenti now has two. And the next foul will put Wapakoneta at the free throw line. And they have some good free throw shooters on the Wapakoneta Redskin team, just looking at percentage wise. So we'll see what Coach Kill chooses to do. Metzger to Kneecamp. And then Nate Metzger again. Plotman. With four corner action. Moyer. Back knee camp into the lane and wisely brings it back out and kills clock. Two minutes to go here. And there's a foul that'll go against Plotman and it's one and one time. He fouled Zach Niekamp, who's an 82% free throw shooter, and is three for three this evening. It's one of one. Burke back in the game. Redditor as well. Niekamp's got 14 points tonight. A little hard, and Burke rebounds. Like Coach got him back in the game. See if the birds can score. Get it under double figures. LCC needs to play a little bit quick here. Down 11 points. Got to get some easy buckets and some defensive stops. It's Plotman for three. And Hall about halfway down and roll back out. And guess who got the rebound? Somebody named Nate Metzger. Yeah, unofficially, I have him for nine rebounds here on the night for this Walpaw team, so. You know, you, you think of him, Josiah, as a 6'1 perimeter player, but he gets a lot of rebounds. Yeah, and really has had to handle the ball a lot tonight for this Walpaw team. Shadle dribbles out of the corner as we're approaching a minute to go in this one. Steele, Cutlip headed the other way, and he is fouled. That will put LCC at the free throw line. Logan Crow will re-enter, as will Ryan Sadler. The foul went to Zach Niekamp, Zach's third foul. Walking in at number two, Logan Crow. Payne Cutlip will go to the free throw line. He's got four points, has not been to the free throw line this evening. Sixty-five seconds to go. And there he is again. Double figure <laughs> rebounds. Yep, unofficially 10 rebounds on the night. Five points, 10 rebounds. Sadler passes up front to Shadle. There's Nate Metzger with the basketball. Heads to the lane. Give me a lane. I'll go to the rim and score. And a really good decision there by Nate Metzger. Felt the pressure, realized that the LCC defense was forced up on all his teammates and was able to use his size to go up and make the easy layup. Here comes Metzger again the other way and his pass goes a little bit errant with 23.2 seconds to go. That'll bring in number 22, Justin Ballman for LCC. Number four, Crew Allen will enter. Number 11, Logan Healy will enter for Wapak Panetta. Both teams start to go to the bench. 23.2 seconds to go in this one. There's Quatman. Carson Parker gets a three look. Burke tried to save it, but it was already hit on the end line with 15.5 seconds to go. Be giving our Stolly Hustle Award winner in just a moment. This will be Crew Allen to advance the basketball. 
And Wapakoneta Redskins will take a 49-36 victory over the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. LCC will drop to five and eight on the season. And now the Wapakoneta Redskins have now won five of their last six. I will even their mark at eight and eight. They are three and two in Western Buckeye League. Next Tuesday, Lima Central Catholic will have Jackson Center at home, the one lost Tigers. And Wapak Canada this Friday will be having Elida in this particular gym. Quarter scores go this way for LCC 4, 13, 14, and 9 for their 36 points. They've been averaging 57.8 points per game. They got just 36 tonight. Wapak Canada 6, 20, 13, and 10. They scored 49. They've been averaging 41.3 offensively. Josiah, let's talk about our Stanley Hustle Award winner. We had a couple guys we thought about. And we decided to go this way this evening. Deacon Redler is a senior, so we're going to go with the senior tonight. Ten points for him. Scored the first basket of quarters one, a three, and four. Had four points early on in the first half to start things out for Wapak Canetta. Just thought what he did this evening, plus the defense he played the interior size, we're going to give it to Deacon Redler this evening. Yeah, and we talked about, you know, some guys having, having to step up. Um, with Jackson Quarter out for this game. You know, and we saw that on a variety of guys, like you said, kind of going back and forth between a couple guys who was our Stolly Award winner. And tonight, like you said, Deacon Redderer, you know, 10 points on the night, uh, six rebounds unofficially, you know, really kept Billy Burke at bay, only allowed three points on the night from Billy Burke, LCC's big man. Um, so, like you said, did a little bit of everything, you know, scored those buckets to get the offensive flowing uh, for this Walpock Redskins team for three of the quarters, um, but then had some really big rebounds there at the end of the game to, to be our award winner. LCC had two players in double figures tonight. Carson Parker with 10, Matthew Quatman with 10. Well, the score in the game was Zach Niekamp. He had 15 tonight. As we said, Deacon Redder had 10, nine for Cash Shadel, and seven for Nate Metzger. Plus, how many boards did Nate have? 10, 11? 10, 10, 10 boards. boards. Yeah, big night for him as well. I want to thank our sponsors this evening. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Our timeout sponsor tonight was Metzger Financial Services and our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Remember, you can check out our Stolly Hustle winner on the WSN YouTube page. You can always find the highlights of our winner there every night on WOSN YouTube TV. We also want to thank our crew here this evening. That would be uh, Stephen McNeil and Megan Sherrick. Megan will take this back to the station and edit this all together for you. And Brad Rex, the athletic director, who met me here this evening and got us all set up, and we appreciate that as well. Once again, Wapakoneta will go to 8-8 in the season. They will take a 49-36 victory over the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. <laughs>